What's up, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll be showing you a complete optimization guide for Hitman 3. Now, previously in my other video, I did a full rundown of the effect of every single setting inside of Hitman 3. So if you're curious as to why I'm picking the graphics options that I have, click the video link in the description down below to see the exact FPS difference that you can expect by changing each of the different settings as well as the visual impact. I did a benchmark of every single option and every single effect that it had. But anyways, enough of that, let's get on to this video. Before we get to optimizing the actual game itself, let's go ahead and optimize Windows, as if you followed my previous video, your game should already be optimized. First of all, let's go ahead and make sure that the game's running on the correct GPU if you're using a laptop with multiple GPUs, and make sure that it's running in the best performance mode that it can. Hit start and type in GPU. Then open up graphic settings. Inside of here, simply make sure that hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is turned on. Having this on, you should get less latency and better performance. If yours was off and you turn it on, make sure to restart your PC for changes to take effect. You can do that at the very end of the Windows optimization section before we get into the game. Then we have graphics performance preference. If you're on a laptop, this option is especially important because it'll choose a power saving GPU over a proper high performance GPU, such as a dedicated Nvidia or AMD graphics card. Start by selecting desktop app on the dropdown and then click browse. Now simply navigate across to where the game is installed in, which for me is an E Games Epic Games Hitman 3. Now inside of here, we're gonna be selecting the launcher.exe, then click options and choose high performance, then click save. On top of this, we'll click browse and navigate back to the same folder here. This time we'll open up Retail, select Hitman 3, and do the same. Options, High Performance, Save. I'm not too sure which one of these would have more of an effect, but applying it to both of these should let you have the best performance possible. Now I do know that the launcher lets you select a GPU, which is rather unique, but I'm pretty sure doing this as well will make sure that the correct one is used, first of all. Now we can close out of this. Let's get into optimizing our NVIDIA graphics settings. Of course, if you're on an AMD graphics card, you can skip through this section or simply follow these settings as close as you can in your own software. Simply right click on your desktop and open up the NVIDIA control panel. Inside of here, we'll be heading across to the Manage 3D Settings section under 3D Settings. Then from the Global Settings tab, we'll be changing to the Program Settings tab at the top here. Then we'll simply select Hitman 3 from the list of games. If you don't see it, Simply click add, and if you've launched the game recently, you should see it on this list of recently played games and apps. Otherwise, click browse and navigate to where the hitman3.exe file is, which is inside of that retail folder we saw earlier. Add that, and then look at what I'm about to punch in on the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in all of these settings and then scroll down. Simply copy the settings as close as you can. You may have more or fewer options than I do. And there we go. Simply copy the first page over here, the second page, and the last page. One of the options you probably are missing is the G-Sync option for the monitor technology. Of course, if you have a FreeSync screen, select FreeSync here. Then simply click apply and you can safely close out of this window. However, if you aren't aware, make sure to check the change resolution tab unless you're absolutely sure you have this set up properly. If you have a high refresh rate display, make sure to select the high refresh rate here and select the correct native resolution for your screen as it will result in a clearer, less blurry gameplay. Scrolling down, I'd also recommend changing it to use NVIDIA color settings, changing the bit depth to the highest available, RGB and full output dynamic range. Of course, if you have an HDR screen, this may look slightly different. Choose the highest quality options here, then hit apply and once again, close out of it. Next up, let's go ahead and clear some clutter out of windows. Hit start and type in disk clean. Open up disk cleanup and you'll see this on your screen. Simply make sure to select the drive with windows installed on it, which for me is C. Hit OK, wait for it to scan through files and you'll see another dialog. Simply select everything you're comfortable with deleting as this is a permanent thing. If you check recycle bin, the recycle bin will be emptied and you won't be able to get any of the data back from it. That's just an example. Everything else here you can usually tick without too much of a worry. I'll hit OK and then delete files. After it's gone through and deleted some of these unnecessary temporary files that aren't currently being used, it'll simply vanish. We'll open it up once again and we'll repeat the process for the drive that the game is installed on. Of course, if you have it installed on C drive, you don't need to worry about it. There we go. After it's gone through and deleted all of the unnecessary files, we should not only have brought back some space on our computer, but we may also claw back some extra performance, especially if your drive is near full. And then finally, let's go ahead and check our Windows power plan. Hit start, type in power and open up choose a power plan. 
Inside of here, you should have a couple of options, but the one that we're going to want to select is Ultimate Performance, as this will give you the best possible performance. If you don't see Ultimate Performance, however, make sure to check the description of this video for a piece of code. Simply copy said code, hit start, type in CMD, and then click Run as Administrator on a command prompt. Then inside of here, paste it in and simply hit Enter. After closing this and refreshing this Power Options screen, you should now see the Ultimate Performance plan that you can select. Now I have two of them, but that's fine. I'll go ahead and close out of the Power Options section, and we're done there. Now that we're done optimizing Windows, let's get into optimizing the actual game itself. Once again, if you'd like more detailed information on exactly why I'm changing everything, make sure to check the video in the description down below, as it explains quite literally everything. Note that some settings can only be changed from this main launch screen over here when you click Options and you aren't able to change them while in-game. The only ones that I'm quite aware of are some of these options up here and a couple of them from down here, such as Simulation Quality and Override Memory Safeguards. So what exactly do we need to punch in here? Well, the ones that have the most effect would definitely be Level of Detail, first of all. The lower this option is, the higher FPS you can expect. Having this set to low will give you the best FPS possible. Texture quality doesn't have much of an impact unless you have a small amount of VRAM. If you have something like a 1080 Ti or 1080 with 8 or 11 gigs of RAM, no matter what setting you set this to, your FPS will be exactly the same. Then we have Texture Filter. Once again, absolutely no effect. SSAO, the lower this option is, the more performance you can expect to gain. Anywhere from 20% between the highest and the lowest. Have this set to off for the highest performance possible. Then, shadow quality. Once again, the lower this is, the better your performance will be. Though there's only about a 5% difference between ultra and low on a 1080 Ti. Of course, this is up to user preference as you might not want jagged shadows in your world. Then, mirror reflection quality. I don't have an RTX graphics card, so I don't know if that has an effect here. But, at least on a 1080 Ti, the lower this option is, the better performance you can expect. Between high and low, you'll be gaining 14% FPS by selecting low, by selecting off. Then, SSR quality. This one's a bit of a weird one, but you can gain quite a bit of stability by lowering this. I didn't gain too many FPS by lowering it, but it was much more stable, so lower is better. Variable rate shading is also a bit odd, and I should expect performance to be better than off. But in my experience, having it set to off instead of quality or performance gave me a 3% performance boost. This may be different for you, I'd expect performance to be better than everything else. 2% isn't too much though, so you can have whatever you want selected. Then, Motion Blur. This is entirely user preference. If you have it on anything but off, you can expect 2% fewer FPS than having it set to off. It's of course up to user preference. Simulation Quality, having this set to best and Base will give you about a 3% difference between these, leaning towards the base side. It doesn't have too much of an FPS difference, but you may want this set to the higher option just for a better gameplay experience. So once again, base for 3% higher FPS. Override memory safeguards had absolutely no effect on FPS, but I would assume having this set to yes may cause the game to become unstable after a long period of playtime. So I'd recommend keeping this to no to let the game manage its own memory. Of course, if you like to benchmark the differences, simply use the benchmark down here with show FPS on and show stats on. But of course, if you'd like to see a much more in-depth video on every single setting and its effect, check the description down below where you'll not only find a video, but in said video, you'll find a link to a Google spreadsheet where you can see graphs and numbers for everything. Now, of course, before we finish here, we have the very obvious options at the very top. Graphics Processing Unit should be the highest powered GPU in your setup. This should also be the one that's selected in the graphics options that we checked in the first part of this video under the Windows optimization. Then Monitor, obviously whichever one you're going to be playing on. Full screen resolution should be the same as the actual screen's resolution out of the box, otherwise it'll look blurry. Display Mode should be exclusive full screen for the highest possible FPS, full screen second and windowed third for lowest FPS. VSync should be off if you'd like lower input latency. However, if you're maxing out your GPU while recording, having the set to on may help that issue. If you're generating more frames than you can actually see, it'll also result in less heat in that case. But having VSync enabled will cause you to have higher input latency, but only slightly, especially at very high FPS. If you do have it on, make sure that VSync interval is set to 1 or 100%. Then finally, HDR. This is entirely user preference, and I would assume that having this set to on would cause a slight performance impact. I unfortunately don't have an HDR screen, so I wasn't able to test this. 
Then finally, super sampling should always be set to 1. If you want to adjust how good the game looks, use the full screen resolution instead, way before super sampling, as this can only go up. You can turn this up if you want much higher fidelity, but of course, first of all, you should raise every other option here if you're going for quality over performance. Having everything set to the highest possible setting and the lowest possible setting, or the optimized ones from this guide, resulted in a performance boost of 43.33%. That took me from 85 frames on average to 122, which is a massive 40 FPS difference. After doing that, simply hit save and your settings will be permanently saved. You can hit play and enjoy the game as is. But anyways, that's where I'll be leaving you off. Thank you for watching this performance guide. Again, check the description down below for other Hitman 3 videos and of course the effect that every option has on the game. My name's been Technobi here for Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!